Previously on Vinland Saga, Thorfinn gets sliced to pieces and doesn't even flinch. Snake looks like he's been through some stuff. Come get this punch. I like how they animated their surprise faces before you see the fist. Or else get this fist. Obviously commands a lot of respect. Chapter 4, Awakening. Thorfinn's maybe. Yeah, how dare you stand there with his confidence. If this guy is who I think he is, he's going to recognize something in Thorfinn. I was going to say, he seems like there's something about him that's Asklad like. Well, something got awakened. Still some fight in him left after all. Interesting. Incredible <laughs> threat. You believe him immediately. That was a very short interaction, but I feel like a lot just happened. He saw something in Thorfinn that he understands. I mean, he probably knew that the guy who was slicing him up wasn't going to kill him. It's a good question. Great question, Thorfinn. I too want to know what he's going to do. There's so much he can accomplish if he just gets the right goal, focus. He just needs a spark, you know? It's all there. We all know the potential's there. Maybe Snake can help bring something out. Among many other things, the show does such a great job letting you know exactly how seasoned the characters are by what they say, but also what they don't say. We come across so many showy characters and you know it's just false bravado. You come across someone who exhibits real confidence, you can get a pretty good idea of what they've been through, where they're at. Despite Snake's opening being him waking up hungover, and ordering an old man to make him some food. You can feel that he's pretty seasoned. Something about the confidence of characters like him and Asklad. For, I don't know, look pretty deep to me, but okay. Take your word for it. They would have. He, he riled them up enough. They probably wouldn't kill them when they're of sound mind. They weren't planning on it from the beginning, but Thorfinn activated that guy's insecurities, and from that point, he wasn't thinking clearly. I feel like later there's going to be a second part to what Thorfinn just said. Thanks for being one of the very few kind people on this farm. Like I said, all around pretty good day. Thorfinn grew up in a den of wolves. Inner just doesn't know. Wait till he finds out. New trip unlocked. Where When are we gonna cut trees? I need my quota of tree chopping. <laughs> he just wants to tag along. Cute. I love these two. There we go. Giving me what I came for. Yes. Yes. <laughs> He's starting to get a glimmer of understanding. There you go. I'm glad we're coming back to this. Because it's incomplete. There's going to be a part two. This is going to come back around. Strong kill the weak. Yes, have some experience. Good talk. I'm slowly getting there. Go. Yes, by the time I was 11. Oddly satisfying. Oddly satisfying. 
くさん殺した。Yeah, how many ants have you stepped on? 軽蔑するか、エイナル。A lot to swallow, but I think e n e r s wise enough to look at the man in front of him, not the man from the past. The strong beat the weak. I think that's on one level obvious, on one level not really considered all that much or in, in full depth. And it's also not the end of the equation. Force is kind of what underlies everything. If there's a conflict between two people and you want to run through all the options of resolving that conflict, because it's in some sense the ultimate is force. And so if people are so inclined and they haven't developed their own personal reasons for why force is wrong, and if there's no fear of retribution, let's say they're at the top of the top, then they might just do it and they'll probably. Get their way. When I say it's often not considered in its full depth, what I mean by that is I think we overestimate the power of norms and institutions as like this entity that just exists when really they're just kind of constructs and it's a tacit agreement between all, all parties or the parties in power to keep things the way they are. Like think about laws, for example. There's no such thing as like a law in any material sense. Basically, whoever has power or whatever group of people has power decides what happens. If laws actually are working, that's a testament to the society. That need not be the case. I mean, I think it's pretty. Obvious that law is not always just or universally applied or principled when it's working well, or perhaps just works to our individual advantage. We tend to take that for granted that it could just simply come to be that it's not the case. Where I think you could perhaps push it further or make it more interesting is that by virtue of the way humans work, there's such tremendous power in numbers. If things are working, if there's actual peace, if there's something resembling justice, it's probably because bad actors are kept in check by sheer volume from obtaining so much power that one malicious person could enact their total will. What's even cooler about that, and Where I think individual strength becomes super important is that while the enforcement of certain principles or practices relies on numbers, a shift in momentum or a maintaining of a status quo or an ideal doesn't take nearly as many people. It can come from a fraction. You know, it can start with one strong individual, for example. One of the reasons why I think this is so important is there's a tipping point, and each individual's contribution is probably more significant than it feels. So, yeah, to Thorfinn's point, the strong dominate the weak for their own selfish aims when it goes wrong. But when it goes right, those same strong people are the ones creating and Preserving peace and prosperity despite great odds, because it need not be the case, and there are many incentives to the contrary. Yeah, they're probably both lying awake now. The air is thick. Yeah, Inra has a lot of associations with warriors. It's a tough position to be in. I think for someone as intelligent as Einar seems to be, he's probably already aware of the complexity of the situation. But that's a lot of trauma to look past. You guys know that feeling of knowing you can rise above something, but you're trapped in the emotion of it, of something you haven't been able to process, some deep fear or pain. I don't even think Thorfinn would put up much of a fight. Haunting. Einar is so preoccupied with his own hell that he has no way of seeing Thorfinn's. Thorfinn just casually sleeping through, getting strangled. They did such a great job with this, making them both understandable. Sympathetic. The viewer has a bird's eye view on, on the whole thing. Both of them united by a very severe inner torment for different reasons. Oh, her. There you go. We see the dream this time. Thorfinn already in a greater pain than anything anybody can inflict on him. Whoa, it's a big move. They're such a great pairing. It's so geniusly done. Was I talking in my sleep again? I'm sorry, was I making noise? Poor Thorfinn, man, I can't imagine what it's like to carry that weight. He's right. Thorfinn. <laughs> 
Oh, it's such a perfect thing to say to Thorfinn, too. He's forgotten his father's sacrifice. Maybe that's because he can't bear to look at that light in the hell he's in. Liner's a good guy. He's getting better. He's thanking people now. Yeah, we got a lot of tree chopping to do, God willing. That scene was amazing. Cricket escaped that time. Is that a vision or a preview? I don't know how they did it, but that scene was so perfectly crafted. You know where both of them are, and you know the gap between them, but they're both kind of fighting the same fight. This episode's called Awakening, right? There's so many meanings to that, or at least two. <laughs> There's the literal awakening from a dream, but they also both go through awakenings or mini awakenings of their own. Einar having some compassion, recognizing that Thorfinn's just a broken man. Thorfinn getting a reminder that despite the fact that the world feels like hell to him, that's not the full extent of it. That's just what's dominating his psyche. The more I think about it, the more I think. It makes sense to me why he wouldn't be thinking about Thor's. Like you wouldn't dare to think about it. It would just make you feel even worse knowing what you are. Going back a bit to what Thorfinn was saying, I'm, I'm no different from those who killed your family. That's such a heavy thing to understand. And I think for what it's worth is big of him and is kind of an important first step. It seems appropriate for where he is. Like you fully settle into that realization and you don't try to shy away from the gravity of it you go all the way to the darkness so that you're contending with the full truth in the form that's most terrifying but then coming out of that a bit there's more to it which is not to be used as an excuse or to mitigate the weight of that because i think that's sh like i said that should be really processed but from where i'm standing the extension to that is i was no different from the men who killed your family fortunately for him who he is now is something he gets to decide moment to moment and he definitely has the potential to be that same person now but he also has the potential to not be that and maybe even be something great it's tough because there's a fine line between using thoughts as an excuse to avoid the gravity of it to avoid fully reckoning with what you've done and the potential for evil that you have which is why i say i think it's correct and appropriate for this moment but then once that happens then the next step is okay given that i know i have the capability and i was that at one point and i accept that fully without shying away from it and understand all that that entails and all it suggests then what is my next step and like i said episode after episode this season what's so exciting about watching thorfinn is his potential the good news is there's hopefully no real down from here so by extension there's a lot of up Einar, in his emotion-fueled way, gave him something like compassion and a challenge to his worldview, which I mean, he seems to have appreciated. When was the last time someone actually reached out to Thorfinn in a caring way? Einar actually directly giving him an example of what he's talking about, where it's not all bleak, it's not all terrible. It's not easy to go into the depths of darkness and kind of live there and stay there. Thorfinn being there involuntarily, it's just a result of his life and his position. I think it gets confusing because if you feel or really contemplate the depths of darkness, it affects your perception of the whole. But the existence of darkness beyond one's wildest comprehension does not exclude the possibility for a light of equal measure. Best case scenario, that kind of reflection, if Thorfinn survives it, means a deeper understanding of why the light is so essential, why it's worth fighting for, and just how rich it really is. But it's going to be a hell of a long climb for him, and Einar for that matter. But they seem like such a great pair for that journey. Honestly, I don't care if they never leave this farm, I don't care if they just cut down lumber. I just want to watch their journey.